If the company you joined has not gone public yet, instead of stocks, you will likely get ESOs. And there are two types of ESOs, NSOs and ISOs. And your company will make you choose between ISO and NSO. Is one objectively better than the other? What is the difference between ISOs and NSOs? There are articles and YouTube videos on this topic. Is it something very complicated that only accountants and really smart people can understand? Therefore, in this video, I'm going to use my design skills to explain ISOs and NSO in a simple and visual way. And I will do it in three chapters. First, I'll start with the easy one, NSO, how it works and give you examples of the different exercising scenarios. Then I'll go to ISO, I'll go over what it is, how it works, walking you through examples and show you the math behind it. And lastly, the most exciting part after understanding both, how they are different in terms of profits and which one is better. But just so you know, I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for strictly informational and maybe entertainment purposes only. So please don't sue me. Still, this is going to be an exciting episode to learn about these options. So you have the option to pick one that works the best for you and make money along the way. So now grab your favorite drink and let's get into it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. And I'm here today to use design to explain ISOs and NSOs. You don't need to smash the like button just yet. Do that in the end if you find this video useful or insightful. Hold me accountable. Now let's start with chapter one, NSOs. What are they and how do they work? To start off, we need some assumptions. We need some raw numbers to work with. So let's say you work in Silicon Valley as a software engineer, classic. You make about 160K per year. That's your salary, you're single. And plugging in these numbers and parameters in this website, you will get the effective tax rate Combining federal tax, California income tax, FICA, etc., and all the breakdowns as well. So let's go to NSOs, and I'm gonna go over three scenarios. We're gonna start with the first one net settlement. You're gonna exercise 1,000 options at a fair market value equals $3. And each option has a $1 grand price, meaning if you want to own one option, you need to pay a dollar to exercise it. So in this case, let's say we want to exercise 1,000 options when the fair market value is $3. So it will cost you $1,000 to exercise 1,000 options, one times 1,000. And from the table before, from that website before, we know the effective income tax, federal, FICA, California, is 32.34% based on the income level. And the spread is three minus one, $3 fair market value minus $1 grand price times 1,000 options. 467 is the total amount of tax you need to pay when you exercise. And since we're doing a net settlement, that means we're not paying anything out of pocket. So where's the money coming from? Well, since you're exercising your 1,000 options at a $3 fair market value, there's a gap between three and one, right? So you generated some gains. So you can use the gain to cover the exercise cost and the tax. So you need to trade in 549 options to cover your exercise cost and tax. And 1,000 minus that is 451. So in the end, you keep 451 options, but you don't have to pay $1,000. You don't have to pay this 647 tax. So then if your company is doing super well, the fair market value goes to milestone two. It goes up to $10 from three to 10, amazing. So you only have 451 options. You decided to sell it here to cash out, assuming that company has a liquidation event, of course, which means by selling the remaining options, you generate $4,510, right? 10 times 451. And assuming this between milestone one and two is more than a year, pay long-term capital gain. 15% is from Fed, 7% from California. The spread is 10 minus three times 451 options. So netted 695 total long-term capital gain. The real take-home pay that you have is how much you gain from selling those remaining options minus the long-term capital gain. You don't have to minus this because you are using the 549 options to cover that already. Meaning you're gonna walk away, you're gonna take home with $3,815. This is scenario number one. Let's look at scenario number two. We're also doing net settlement. We're also exercising 1,000 options, but we're exercising it at a fair market value equals $10. 
and we're gonna sell all those options at ten dollars as well. So same one thousand options, one dollar grand price. Fair market value milestone one, three dollars. We decide to do nothing. You know, wait until when it gets higher. The company is doing super well. The fair market value equals ten dollars now. So you decide to exercise and sell all one thousand options to cash out. And of course, simple math. The exercising cost is the same, one thousand dollars. The federal income tax since you are exercising and selling at the same time. So you won't be getting the long-term capital gain benefit. This will be taxed as ordinary income, 32.34% times the spread, $10 minus $1 and 1,000 options equals 2911. And of course, we're using net settlement. We're using some of the gains to cover the cost, the exercising cost and the tax. The sum of those divided by 10, the fair market value equals 392 options and 1000 minus that is 608 that is the amount you will be keeping and in the end you sell the remaining 608 options which gives you six thousand and eighty dollars so in this method in this scenario when you exercise a fair market value equals ten dollars also net set of a method also one thousand options you will get sixty eighty gain scenario number three also with NSOs, also 1,000 options. But in this case, instead of net settlement, you pay out of your pocket. You don't use any of your gains to cover your exercise cost and tax. When the fair market value milestone equals $3, you want to exercise 1,000 options so that you can own them. The exercise cost is $1,000. So you pay it out of your pocket. The tax will be the same as the first scenario, also $647, which means you have to pay $1,647 out of your pocket when you choose to exercise your 1,000 options at a fair market value equals $3. Then a year or two later, the company is doing super well. Fair market value equals $10 now. You decide to sell them, cash out. So by selling them, you will get $10,000, right? You have a thousand options. Each one is worth $10 now, so 10,000. And since it's more than a year or two, you trigger long-term capital gain tax. You own $1,540 long-term capital gain tax. The total gain from all these pay out of pocket method is $10,000, what you gain at the end, minus $1,000 exercise cost minus $2,187, the total tax. So you will net $6,813. So putting all of them together, the three different scenarios that we talked about, you exercise early with net settlement at fair market value $3, $10, or you don't do net settlement at all. You pay out of money as early as you could. And when you exercise 1,000 options, the net gain can be quite different. And if you scale it up to 25K options, the gain can be more substantial. By just looking at this table, between net settlement later and paying it out of the money early, by early, let's just say at $3. Paying up front, you actually make more money and more profit. The drawback is, of course, you have to pay the money up front. You have to come up with the money for it. That all makes sense, right? Should be pretty straightforward. Now let's get more advanced in chapter two. ISOs. How does it work? With ISO, there's only one way to exercise. You have to pay money out of your pocket. And we will use the same amount of options, 1,000, same grand price, $1. At fair market value equals $3, say you will exercise 1,000 options. The exercise cost is the same. $1,000. And here is where ISO gets different and slightly more complicated. Federal and California income tax. This has nothing to do with your exercising. This is only talking about your 160K salary of income tax, not including FICA. 18.2 effective rate for Fed, 7% effective rate for California. So you have to pay 40K ish income tax with just your salary. With ISO, there's something called AMT, Alternative Minimum Tax, which is something the government came up to make sure rich people pay their fair shares if they exercise options. And the AMT, in this case, if you would exercise a thousand shares, is about 28K. And this is after some tedious math. There are quite a few things in it, but not too crazy. 160K from your job, from your salary, the spread is $3 fair market value minus $1 grand price, 1,000 options. That's 2,000 
ISO spread. So your AMT income, your alternative minimum tax income, is the sum of the two, 162k. And since you're single, you also get some exemption, minus about 76k. So you net it ATM income of about 86k. And the federal tax rate for AMT is 26%, for California is 7%, so it's netted 33%. So 33% times that is about 28k of AMT. And that's how we got to this number. And since the AMT, the minimum tax, is lower, is less than the total amount of tax you will have to pay normally. So nothing is affected, nothing is new, false alarm, you just pay your normal shares of total income tax. So a year or two later, company is doing well, fair market value is $10 now, you sell those 1,000 options to cash out and you receive of course, $10,000, 10 times 1000 Your federal income tax is the same as before, assuming you have the same salary, also 40 k So the long-term capital gain tax is 15 Fed, 7%, California. Spread is still $10 minus grand price. That's different from NSO. So the total amount of tax you're paying here is about 42 k the sum of the two. Your long-term capital gain tax for AMT is 15% Fed, 7% California, times 10, minus 3. When you calculate AMT, it's going to be different from just calculating the normal capital gain tax. You use the latest fair market value minus the fair market value when you exercised it. So it netted 1.5k each. And since the AMT is lower, again, than the total amount of income tax you pay, the total income tax instead. Your net gain in this case would be 10,000, that's the cash you receive, minus 1,000 exercising costs you pay out of your pocket, and the tax, 2K. So you net 7,020 bucks. And here is when things get interesting. If you were to exercise more ISOs, let's say 25K, same grand price, $1, your exercise cost will be one times 25K, 25K. The income tax for the salary is still the same, 40K. However, the alternative minimum tax is now 44k. Your salary times spread times amount of ISO you're exercising. And then that gets to your income minus the exemption, the net income times the same 33% tax rate, netted 44k of AMT. Since the AMT is now higher than your income tax, which means you actually have to pay the 44k AMT amount. So the AMT you own is actually about 4k, the difference, your income tax from your salary, your company will withhold it for you, so you're paying it for every, in every paycheck. But the net minimum tax you have to pay is this amount, so you pay the difference when you're filing your tax return in April. And because you're paying AMT this year, it gives you AMT credit, tax credits that you can use in your following year tax return if certain criteria, certain requirements are met. So how much ever you're paying, you get that amount of credits, which is great because you get a tax break. So a year or two later, company's doing well, fair market value, $10. You're selling all of them to cash out. You get 250 k cash. Same salary, same federal and California income tax, 40 k Your long-term capital gain, same calculation, is about 50 k long-term capital gain tax. Total tax is the sum of these two. And the AMT long-term capital gain tax is 35k, 39k ish. Remember, it's 10 minus 3 because the cost basis is suggested after it's getting exercised. And since AMT is lower than the total amount of tax you're paying, so you pay this instead. You can ignore AMT. And because AMT is smaller than that, that's when you can actually use the AMT credits. So in summary, net gain will be the total amount of cash you receive minus exercise costs from here and all the tax you're paying which will be 175 500 And the total tax credit that you will get from here is almost 4K. And if you consider tax break is a gain, then your quote unquote new net gain will be about 179K. Now you have seen the math breakdown for NSOs and ISOs. Do you have a clear idea which one is the winner, which one to pick? Maybe some side-by-side -side comparison can provide you further insight. Let's go to chapter three, NSOs versus ISOs. What are their differences? Is there a clear winner? Looking at this table, ISO is objectively more superior because you can make more money, 
and get tax benefits. Even the best way to exercise NSO can only come second and it's a few thousand dollars short. If we look at the even less optimal ways to exercise NSOs, the profit can get even lower compared to ISO. Here are some of my opinions. Again, my subjective opinions, not financial advice, this is how I see it. Since the best options are always paying up front, whether it's ISOs or NSOs, and ISO does yield higher return, then why bother choosing NSO pay out of the pocket option? Let me just rule that one out. Between exercising early and late for NSOs, no brainer, exercise as late as possible, I'll root that one out. That will leave me two options. Between the two to make the most money, of course, I will pick ISOs. But it requires me to do a few more things. One, I have to pay up front and to maximize profit, I have to exercise more, meaning pay more up front. I will also have to fill out additional tax forms to claim the AMT credits. I have to keep track of the exercising and sell activities so that I can time it well to maximize my AMT credits. And so on the other hand, net settlement, I click a button, I'm done. No upfront payment, no additional tax forms, not necessarily any timing for anything. Very flexible, but of course, lower profit. But hey, 150K is still 150K, still pretty good money. And just FYI, to simplify this video, there are quite a lot of things that I did not include, including unqualified disposition of ISO, which kind of defeats the purpose of ISO, so I did not include that. I didn't talk about short-term holding of either of those instruments. I did not go too deep into the details of how and when ATM credits can be used. I did not talk about the timing of selling and exercising. I did not talk about the downside scenarios and implications. But that's also something to keep in mind. It's possible that the future fair market value can be lower than the one that you exercise that. With just what I have shown, I think there is an objectively superior option, ISOs, by just looking at the numbers. But everybody's situation is different, so there will be subjectively a best one for everybody. But you know, don't listen to some random YouTuber with less than 10k subscribers talking about finance. There's a lot more to it. If you have a tax guide, they can spend hours walking you through all the details. However, if this video does help you in any way, smash the like button down below to help support this very small channel and consider subscribing so you don't miss any visual and user-friendly finance videos in the future. Do you have any friends that need to choose between ISO and NSOs and need some introduction? Send them this video, I would greatly appreciate it. Here are more videos explaining stocks and options in a simple and visual way. Check them out right there. Keep using design to square up your finances and see you all in the next video. Choose.